Hi there, I'm Doggy Dan. Welcome to part one of this five part series where I'll be sharing with you how I work and giving you some training exercises that you can put into practice straight away with your dog. But first, a big thank you for giving me this opportunity. Okay, now in this first video, we're looking at the very common issue of dogs pulling on the leash. So let's get started by looking at some simple techniques and one of my favorite exercises that you can put into practice today. So here's a short clip from one of my consultations regarding a pulling dog. As you can see, she's a lovely, lovely little dog here, or medium-sized dog, and her owner is a guy called Zach. And he's a great guy. Um, he does it, he's doing everything he can to stop this dog from pulling. But for those of you who have a pulley dog, you will know what it's like. It seems like nothing will stop them sometimes. And uh, I wanted to show you this actually. This guy loves his dog. That is a real tattoo he's got on his leg of his dog here. That's true love. Now, first of all, I just wanted to point out that she's wearing a collar. And a collar is not a good device if you've got a dog who's pulling. They are very good when your dog is trained, but in the training stages, in the early stages, the learning stage, you don't want to be using a collar because as you can see, as she pulls forward, Zach pulls backwards and she just kind of leans into it. It almost encourages the pulling. If you think about it, it's how sort of a husky will pull a sled. You know, the sled is pulling back and the huskies just keep driving forward. So it also causes, you know, stress to the dog's neck. She's pretty pulley. She's pretty pulling, man. She's pretty. Can you stop her pulling? Oh, she's pretty good there, but she just, yeah, she just doesn't stop. Is that right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. She just keeps on going. So here's the main exercise I want you to practice. It's called the turn in front, with the emphasis being on the word in front. So keep a shorter lead, a bit of a shorter lead. Pull it in, pull it in a bit. Now, what I want you to do, because that's good, turn in front of her and turn her around. Turn in front, that's it. Turn her around, that's good. And walk down the street this way a bit, sorry. Keep her on that side. And now turn in front of her again and turn her around again. That's it. Right now, that's good. Now walk the speed up, walk a bit faster. So let me do a slow replay. First of all, I'm talking about the length of the leash. It's way, way, way too long. So shorten it, shorten it up even more. So I'm saying to Zach, no, that's too long. He's just setting his dog up to fail with a leash that long. You want a very short leash, but you want the leash to be loose. And here's the turnaround. So his right thigh goes across the face of the dog. You actually want to turn your dog's head in that situation, get their head to turn, and then you keep your dog in the same hand, sort of keep them on your right in this situation, turn the dog's head again there, beautiful turn. And Zach's walking the dog on the right, that's fine, you can change it later on if you want to. So that simple but powerful exercise is called the turn in front. It's far more effective for stopping your dog from pulling than just yanking on the leash. So I just want you to practice that with your dog when you're out on the walk. How's she doing? Good enough. Feels better? Yeah. She's looking, no, keep her walking, keep her walking. Yeah. So what you can do now is you can even relax your arm a bit. Yeah. Just give it a little tug back a little bit, that's it. Yeah. And now wind it in a little bit more, so it's not so loose. Yeah. That's good. And now turn in front of her again. That's cool. That's good, that's cool. bring her around, bring her around. That's good, right. So I'm just going to replay that here because there's a lot of little things going on here. First of all, Zach's dog starts to go off and sniff, and he starts to let her. And I have to correct him and say, no, no, don't let her sniff. You don't want to let your dog to sniff whenever they want to. You must be deciding that. It's a, something I'll go into more. I call it the structured and the social walk. The other thing, though, is how long the leash is. Look, he's wound it in there a bit, but it's still too long. You see how long that leash is? It's very hard for him to relax his arm. Look how high his arm is. And that's all because the leash is just way too long. So wind it right in there. She's happier on that shorter leash. So what I thought I'd do is I'd just demonstrate what I mean by a, sh a very short leash. You know, I'm not doing anything different. I've just got a much shorter leash. And when she pulls, I lift it up a little bit. But I'm going to turn in front here. And the powerful thing about turning is it says I'm in charge and I make the decisions. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to turn in front of her. And there you go. The leash is probably a little bit long even with me there. But what you'll find is if you just watch me for a, for a few seconds here, and get the leash under your dog's chin, it helps them relax. You don't want it on that side, you want it under there, make it all comfortable for your dog. And you want to see if you can have your hand almost on your pocket. So if you watch, you should have a relaxed shoulder 
a relaxed elbow and a relaxed wrist. There she's starting to walk nicely and I'm speeding it up a bit. As soon as she's starting to pay attention though, I'm going to turn because I'm sort of saying, come on, I'm in charge, you follow me. I don't let her sort of lead me. And look, I've already almost moved from holding the leash to having it just balancing on my finger. And when you compare that to how she was just a couple of minutes ago, it's a huge change. And we've only been doing this for about 10 minutes or so. So some big changes there. And here we are a short while later, her owners come out to see what we're doing, how it's all going. And it's brilliant because before she was actually struggling to walk her on the leash. But as you can see now, no trouble at all. They're working really well together. So let me just summarize what we've gone through. First of all, that very, very powerful but simple exercise, the turn in front. You turn in front of your dog like this and that says to them, I'm in charge, get back. Now, if you wanna carry on going in the same direction, you obviously have to do two of those. That's beautiful. Now, the second thing is a short leash. You don't want a long leash. You want it nice and short, but loose, just like we have here. That stops the dog from being able to change sides and wander off and do their own thing. The third thing is you want to be able to have a nice relaxed shoulder, elbow, and wrist. So effectively, with that short leash, your hand should be able to relax nicely on your pocket. Even if you turn your dog around, you shouldn't have to be lifting your arm up high in the sky. It should be down by your side like it is here. So there you go, a couple of tips and a very powerful exercise. Now, when it comes to pulling on the leash, the stuff I've shown you here is great, but it's also crucial that you've convinced your dog inside the house that they should be listening to you and following you. Because dogs who think they're in charge will always lead and they lead from the front, not the back. Put another way, if they aren't obedient inside the house, you'll probably struggle outside on the walk. So bear that in mind. Now, in tomorrow's video, we're gonna be working with a very, very cute little puppy named Jock, who's a lot of fun to watch. So make sure you tune in. Until then, take care and love your dog.